Hey, it's Reverend Deborah coming to you from my car for ministry messages. Okay, why am I in my car? Well, I'm coming to you from uh, my polling location. I decided today was the day I'm going to get out there and vote. And I thought it was a good day to talk about our upcoming service. Now, to be sure, those lines back there, which you probably can't see, but trust me, they're there. Those lines are filled with a lot of people, some of whom think like me and probably many who don't. And so what to do? <laughs> what do you do when you're surrounded by people that may not think like you? How do we have those conversations together? Well, this week's service is all about that. It's about listening. It's about listening across the lines and it's about listening in the margins. So what does that all mean? Well, I know for me, I often feel like I live in a little bit of a bubble. It's like this self-created bubble. I listen to certain news sources. I, you know, engage with certain social media. I have particular people I associate with and we can, sure, there's diversity in what we think, but we can also start thinking a lot alike. And I think a lot of us do that. And that makes sense. You know, we want to be with people that, you know, we have some things in common with. But that's not our whole world, is it? We live in this big, beautiful world. We have relatives, we have friends, we have acquaintances, and we have just co-humans out here who may not all think like us. So let's have some deeper discussion about that this week. How do we engage? How do we listen deeply when we may not agree with somebody? And I also really want to explore this idea of listening at the margins. You know, often certain um, identities are centered, certain people with power, economic power, um, just social power are the ones that get the most voice. And so I think it really is required of us to make sure we are listening for not just those voices that are often centered, but the voices that tend to be pushed to the margins of society. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. And we're not just going to talk about it this weekend. We are going to get an amazing opportunity to really practice. We often say we need not think alike to love alike. Well, on Sunday, or after our second hour activity, so please come to our Sunday service uh, as normal. It is at 945, and the links are all over the place, including on our website. So find the service at 945. Uh, come to some of the many uh, religious education and exploration activities that are available starting at 1115. There'll be some fellowship time between services normal. But then at 1230, we're having a special congregational meeting. We're going to be discussing and then voting on whether we should put up a Black Lives Matter banner outside our congregation. Now, to be sure, this is a topic where we do not all think alike. Should I repeat that? This is a topic where we do not all think alike. But the question is, what would it look like for us to love of like, love alike around this topic? What would it look like for us as Emersonians to come together on a topic we may not all think alike on, but to really listen deeply? Not just coming with our preconceived ideas as we often do to a conversation, but can we come to this conversation ready to share from our own perspective, but also really ready to listen deeply to another? And then what does it look like for us to love alike? So that's how we're going to engage in this conversation this, uh, this weekend in our service, in our post-service activities, and then at 1230 for our congregational meeting. If you are not a member of the congregation, you're welcome to attend. Uh, you won't be invited to share or to vote, but you can watch us in action. Um, there's lots of details coming out. You should have received a vine with more information, members, about how to vote but make sure to attend and really to understand a little bit more about uh, how it is that we got to this vote. Um, we had a group of uh, members of the congregation who 
uh, petition to have this conversation. So I'm going to invite them now to say a little bit about why it is they felt the need to petition the congregation to have this congregational meeting to talk about this topic. So I'm going to get in there, stand in that line. It's probably going to take me longer to stand in that line than it's going to take for you to watch this uh, next piece of the video. But please watch it and then bring your open hearts, bring your uh, deep listening ears, and let's join together this Sunday in community. Bless it be. So why is the Black Lives Matter sign important? By specifically giving attention to a marginalized group, are we really being equal? Are we really honoring the seven UU principles? That's a good question. Let's look at some of our principles and see what wisdom they may have on the topic. Principle number one, the inherent worth and dignity of every person. All right, Black Lives Matter. Because we aren't claiming that only Black Lives Matter and we aren't claiming that Black Lives Matter more, that doesn't seem to go against our beliefs and in the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Uh, principle number two, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. The BLM movement is partly an attempt to shine a light on some of the inequities happening in our modern society. So that seems to check out too. Our sixth principle, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. Well, the Black Lives Matter movement is trying to give voice to marginalized people trying to highlight disparity. And to this end, they encourage anyone aware of these issues to lend their voice in what way they can. Get the word out, help educate, that sort of thing. So if you believe Black Lives Matter, please don't be shy about it because that silence is part of the problem. Just to be clear, the opposite of Black Lives Matter is not all lives matter. The antithesis would actually be Black Lives do not matter. So looking at those two options, Black Lives Matter, Black lives do not matter. I know what I personally believe is supported by the EU principles. What do you think? Um, if there's a bigger sign, then people can see it when they're zooming past and said tiny signs. Why does a Black Lives Matter banner matter in our congregation? Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an escapable network of neutrality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. That's a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. Racism, whether unconscious, conscious, or systematic, is a pervasive force in American culture today. We call for ending the disproportionate deaths caused by racism, and we call for ending the racial injustices that cause trauma and lessen opportunity. We are taking a stance in response to the racial oppression that has continued over generations, taking different forms. It is a moral objection to the increasing racial wealth gap, the school-to-prison pipeline, housing inequality and gentrification, institutionalized racism, and forms of violence aimed at people of color. It calls upon each of us to simply recognize and affirm the inherent dignity and value of Black life. As the Black Lives Matter website states, Black Lives Matter is an ideological and political intervention in a world where black lives are systematically and intentionally targeted for demise. It is an affirmation of black folks' contribution to the society, our humanity, and our resilience in the face of deadly oppression. Hi friends, I'm Lauren Hayden Hawan. I'm married to a Jamaican man and I have two biracial children. And I'm a big pro proponent of Emerson having a Black Lives Matter sign. When my youngest was born and they laid him on my chest, my first thought was, I'm sorry for the way the world will treat you. Because in that moment, I was acutely aware that his skin tone was darker, and therefore he had a lifetime of injustice ahead of him for something that was completely out of his control. No mother should feel that way. And it is time that we take a stand to make sure it doesn't happen any longer. A banner is just the beginning. We have a lot of work to do to dismantle the systematic racism and injustice in this country. And it's time. That's all. Well, I'm back from voting. That wasn't too bad at all. So uh, please, everybody, remember, get your sticker. Wherever you are, get out there, your vote. Your vote and your voice really matter. Go vote.